Hey everybody, welcome back to IndyCar. It is, what day is it today? It is the 17th of September and today of course is the day uh, that the English Supreme Court sits with its 11 judges to try and figure out whether uh, Boris Johnson has illegally prorogued Parliament uh, for five weeks or whether or not that's actually perfectly acceptable and prorogation of Parliament um, in order to stymie any kind of democratic scrutiny is actually quite okay. <clears throat> now, the problem with this is that, of course, there are two laws which pertain in the United Kingdom because there are two nations in the Union, that is England and Scotland. In England, English law covers everything and in Scotland, Scottish law covers everything. And under the, <clears throat> the terms of the Treaties of Union of 1707, Scottish law is preserved in perpetuity. In other words, it has exactly the same status as English law. So in England, if you, if you want to do anything legal in England, then you do it under English law. If you want to do something legal in Scotland, then you do it under Scots law. Now under Scots law, the, uh, the Court of Session, uh, the three judges who are the most senior uh, law officers in Scotland, judged that Boris Johnson's actions in proroguing Parliament for five weeks were unlawful and unconstitutional because he was doing it out of the, the, the motivation for him doing this, a big one, was to stymie Parliament, to stop it sitting and to prevent any uh, proper scrutiny by Westminster Parliament of whatever it was he was planning to do uh, with Brexit. And it's widely believed by almost everybody and the dogs in the street that Boris Johnson was simply dodging any scrutiny at all. The whole point of the five week prorogation was to keep Parliament silent for five weeks while Boris Johnson uh, ran the clock down until it is too late for the United Kingdom to come up with the deal. Now we've already seen uh, from Boris's embarrassing and humiliating performance in Luxembourg yesterday that he has nothing. He has no proposals. The European Union has not received any new ideas, proposals, concepts of anything of any description whatsoever which would lead you to believe that there was any kind of negotiation on the offing. In fact, negotiating is precisely what's not happening at the moment. What's happening at the moment is there are talks about talks, as they say, uh, and these talks about talks are basically feeling the, the edges of the European Union out to see if they will give way to whatever it is that uh, Boris Johnson and his team want to force through. Uh, and it seems that the European Union is just completely unimpressed by this and is just waiting for the British to say something or do something, which of course they haven't done. And Boris was treated to a meal of snails yesterday, which I thought was strangely appropriate for the British government which moves at a snail's pace uh, when it comes to negotiating the future of 60 million people who they're supposedly responsible for. So we now have this bizarre situation where the so-called Supreme Court, which is only supreme in England incidentally, um, has got to decide whether the Scots Law Law's decision is the right one, or whether the High Court in England, which said it didn't feel that this was a uh, a matter which could be ruled on in English law, that it was a political matter, where does the, the truth actually lie? And that puts these 11 law lords in England in a very sticky wicket because if they come down in favour of the, the English court system, which says that it is not uh, a legal matter and it can't be ruled upon by the courts, then that means that Boris Johnson could shut down Parliament or parliaments, interestingly, for any period of time he wishes at any point in history. Any time in the future he wanted to shut parliament down, he, he would have the powers to do so. And nothing in English law would say no to that. However, in Scots law it's different. Now remember what I said, law in England is different from law in Scotland. If Boris Johnson tried to pr prorogue parliament again, or he attempted to shut down Holyrood by proroguing it as well, then he would be breaking the law in Scotland. He would become a criminal. And I don't know if it would ever happen, but it's possible that the Scottish courts might put out uh, an arrest warrant for Boris Johnson if he did that. They might actually file an extradition for an extradition treaty with England to have him brought to Scotland to face trial. These are the bizarre aspects of this entire case at the moment. 
So if the English court, the English so-called Supreme Court, ruled um, in favour of the English attitude, which is that it's nothing to do with the courts and that Boris Johnson's uh, actions are political, must be dealt with by Parliament, then they are basically saying that Scots law is worthless or is subservient or inferior to English law. And if they say that, by, by implication, that is, is what they would be saying, then that breaks one of the fundamental pillars of the actual union itself, which is that Scots law is sacrosanct in perpetuity in Scotland. And if Scotland's law lords and the whole country of Scotland believes that Boris Johnson is acting illegally and he is a criminal, and the English uh, law lords say, oh no, he isn't, you're wrong, your, your law is inferior to ours, then the union is over because the, there is the proof right there. They have actually broken one of the fundamental conditions of the union, and that is that Scots law is not inferior to English law. I'm not saying it's superior. It's not. It's of equal value. English law is of equal value in England. But if England thinks it's okay for them to shut down their parliament, then and we don't, then we cannot agree to that. And there is a, a, a basically an existential crisis for the union, where one part of the union says the prime minister is a criminal, and the other side says, oh no, he isn't. What do you do when you get to that stage? You can't do any more because um, the guy who is leading the, the two nations off the edge of the Brexit cliff is regarded as a criminal by one of the countries involved. And this is the bizarre situation that has been manufactured by the Brexiters. So we're waiting for all this to fall out. And whatever happens today, uh, it will be a disaster for the Union one way or the other. If the Scots law lords are... Uh, ruling is upheld by the Supreme Court, that creates an even bigger problem. The backlash from the Little England uh, British nationalists who are going to start shrieking that Scotland has no right to interfere uh, in English Parliament's workings, because that's the way they see it. They see it as an English Parliament. And we're going to get, oh, but this is all down to English votes for English laws. And there we see this whole dichotomy again, where Scotland and England have separate systems. English uh, politicians are going to say, well, Scotland has no business uh, telling us that our Prime Minister is a criminal. And you can see where this is leading. It, every road leads to separation here because both systems are different and both countries have completely different opinions. And not just opinions, but legal opinions of what is legal and what is not legal. So whatever happens today, um, we are balanced on a knife edge, really, when it comes to the, the remaining, whatever is binding this union together, is hanging by a thread at the moment. Uh, and whatever the outcome today, that thread will be cut one way or the other. Either Scotland is going to be majorly pissed off <coughs> if uh, the English law lords say that their law is better than Scots, and Scots law is inferior. They cannot really do that. But if they come down on the side of the English court, then the inference is there. The implication is that Scots law is the pretendy law. It's not real, that it is not, um, it does not overrule anything in England. And there is where the problem has always lain. Right from 1707 to the present time, the only reason that the union has prevailed is simply because the, uh, the English parliament has got more English parliamentarians than Scots in it. Because the two parliaments were combined together and the Scots have about a tenth of the numbers of MPs that uh, England and Wales have. And because of this, Scotland has always uh, had to put up with what the larger number of uh, MPs wanted. That's going to change now because this is no longer about Westminster, it's no longer about the internal workings of the United Kingdom, this is about the future of all four nations involved in the UK and its Brexit. And I include Ireland in that incidentally, both top and bottom parts of it. So we're on the horns of a dilemma. Boris Johnson is about to, well, basically explode the entire United Kingdom into its component parts. And, well, if that's what he wants to do, fair enough, bring it on. But there has to be a general election, and we are going to win our, our bit of the general election, and I hope we win all 59 seats, chase Willie Rennie and his cohort out of Scotland for good, and make sure that all of Scotland, like it did with Brexit, like every constituency, 
votes in favour of independence. We've already voted in, in favour of staying in the EU. All we have to do now is apply that same solidarity to staying in the EU by becoming independent, because it's basically the same thing. Those of 62% of us who want to stay in the EU need to vote for the SNP so that we become independent and we do stay in the EU. Now, on a lighter note, um, it may not have escaped your notice today that the famous Flamingo Land development, which was planned for Loch Lomond on the southern shores of Loch Lomond near Balloch, has actually been refused. The planning permission has been refused and the National Park Authority has refused permission for Flamingo Land to go ahead with the development. All of this after months and months of public pressure uh, led uh, partly by Ross uh, Greer of the Green Party uh, and by many other people including Alana Mora uh, and other activists who work for independence but also work for the good of the environment. So Loch Lomond has been saved from what I think would have been a, a, a bad idea, a development which would have destroyed a piece of land which has naturally regenerated itself into forest um, by bulldozing it and building hotels and um, glamping cabins and aerial walkways and water parks. Now these things might sound terrific on paper, but this is a national park. This is not a piece of derelict land, as Flamingo Land claim. This is a piece of natural land now, which has been reclaimed by nature, is now part of the Loch Shore, and is enjoyed by local people as it is, as a natural environment for wildlife. So we can now say there will be no flamingos landing at Barloch now. And although Flamingo Land's boss has said that they are going to go back and look at the conditions um, that were set for the development and try to address them and resubmit, I don't think they'll go for it. Once they've spent all of that money on trying to push something as big as this through, if it fails at the last hurdle like this because of public pressure, it's very likely the investors will pull out because they don't want to spend more money on another possible uh, planning application which is also going to be rejected. This piece of land belonged to the people of Balloch. It was gifted to uh, the town by the previous owners of the land, the dye company which owned the dye works which used to sit on the land there. When that was demolished and removed, they gave that piece of land into the care of the local authority for the people. And that local authority sold the people out. They basically sold the piece of land which they got for free for over £250,000 or something like that. And then they gave it to um, a, a Scottish Enterprise, who obviously then so were going to sell it on for an even bigger profit to Flamingo Land, all to make money um, and nothing at all to do with the environment. Uh, and the promise of jobs that was being made by Flamingo Land by the time uh, the thing would have been built, if it's not built, because of the developments that are currently happening around Balloch, the same number or a similar number of jobs will have been created anyway without this development. So there was never any need for it from the point of view of economics and job creation. This was primarily a profit-driven enterprise. Scottish Enterprise, remember, was a British-constructed agency. Its purpose was to attract inward investment into Scotland by promising cheap land, tax breaks, sweeteners of all sorts to get foreign companies to invest in Scotland. Instead of actually encouraging local businesses and helping them to grow into uh, the area where they already are. So when when Scottish Enterprise gets hold of something like this, it's all about money and it's all about business. It is nothing at all to do with the environment. Remember, Loch Lomond is a national park. Its entire natural environment is meant to be protected by law. And for once, the National Park Authority has finally stood up for itself and said no. And I hope they keep saying no. And I'd like to congratulate Ross Greer, Alana Mora, and all of the other activists who planned the campaign and got hundreds and thousands of people on their side. And I remember there were at least 50,000 people signed their petition. I'm sure it's far more than that now. I signed it myself. There is no way we want to let developers into a national park to put up something the size of a flamingo land development. Whether or not it's an amusement park doesn't matter. 
the idea of bulldozing a piece of natural forest to put up flats, to put up hotels, to build water parks, is not what a national park is there for. It is there to preserve the wildlife, the flora and fauna, the trees, the plants, the animals, all the other critters that live in and around the loch. What they should be doing is pouring some of that investment money into getting the maid of the loch up and running. That beautiful paddle steamer, get it converted to running on something a little bit greener than coal. A new boiler in it would be terrific and a piece of local history that would attract hundreds of thousands of visitors every year could be up and running instead of wasting money building resorts that nobody wants. Anyway, that's it from me today. I'll see you all tomorrow. Um, I don't know what's going to happen today with this uh, court hearing, but I guarantee you whatever happens, uh, it's going to cause a major upset in British politics. And I mean a major uh, division between Scotland and England. Doesn't matter which way it goes, there's going to be either a backlash uh, from English politicians or there's going to be a backlash from the people of Scotland. But one way or another, these judges, unless they fudge this case and say they can't decide it, uh, are going to create mayhem today. And again, this is another one of these offsprings of the Brexit chaos which is coming our way in November. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.